Happy weekend coming. NFL playoffs on the way. Dallas Cowboys not in them, uh, but a lot to be learned from them. Uh, and uh, that leads us to uh, three issues. Really, it's an issue of honesty and clarity. It's, it's one issue as it relates to a number of uh, occurrences. I'm going to start with an easy one. Good for Amari Cooper. Um, got the cleanup surgery on the ankle. Not a big deal. And uh, boy, I appreciate that Cooper just goes on. And this is great uh, in regard to the way players get to do it now. You don't have to hold a press conference. You don't have to ask the PR director. You don't have to check with your marketing people. You don't have to ask your sponsors. You just go on Instagram or Twitter or YouTube and just say, I, I, I had minor surgery today on my ankle. Everything's fine. No muss, no fuss, no arguments, no debates, no controversy. Easy. I admire that. That is one thing about Amari Cooper uh, of the Dallas Cowboys. He uh, has a very straightforward and thoughtful approach to everything he does, certainly in his dealings with the media, which means his dealings with you uh, as we serve as the conduit. And so good for Coop. Easy clarity. Less clear. What are the Cowboys doing with Mike Nolan? Our man, Mike McCarthy, on Friday morning uh, did his 6.30 a.m. visit with Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. And they asked him straight up and point blank. And by the way, speaking of clarity and honesty, good job, Sean and RJ. Let's go. Got to ask it. What's the status of defensive coordinator Mike Nolan? We can go through the numbers again if you want to. I don't know. I don't know that it's necessary. I think you probably get it. You can't oversee a season like that defensively and go into your boss and say, I don't know, everything looks fine to me. You can't. You can try, but the boss needs to say no. The boss needs to say it's not good enough. It didn't look good enough to me. It never was good enough. I, I, I'm not saying that there weren't spurts of competence, energy, effort from the Dallas Cowboys defense over the course of 16 games and preseason, I, I, certainly, and practice. Certainly there were spurts of it, incidents of it. Uh, in retrospect, they were so noticeable. And then you think back, maybe they sh maybe it shouldn't be so easy to notice when guys get it and guys are trying. The Cowboys allowed franchise records of 57 touchdowns and 473 points. And Coach McCarthy on Friday morning, after a 6-10 and 10 season in which his defense set records for ineptitude, said, yeah, we're still evaluating the situation. That, that's not transparency. That's not clarity. That's not truth. There's nothing to evaluate. Um, it's because somebody's out of town. It's because Coach McCarthy told the coaches to go take a quick vacation and then come back next week and we'll figure it out. They're not looking for clarity. They're, they're, from, from the McCarthy perspective, they're begging for time. And, and maybe that's delayed the Joneses because the Joneses are trying to collect information and they want to hear Mike McCarthy's evaluation of his friend. But you can't make a positive evaluation here. And in fact, we've just got to guess at clarity and guess through transparency or the lack thereof. And so when the head coach says we're still evaluating whether or not the defensive coordinator is staying and now a week has passed since the end of the season, that's a pretty hot seat. And then we go to, and this is bigger than the Cowboys. This is an NFL thing. Although when you examine what's going on with the Houston Texans, it might make you appreciate the way the Cowboys are run. Not that there aren't stumbles and bumbles around here. There are. But nothing like in Houston, where they told the quarterback, Deshaun Watson, who is there, Michael Jordan, we, we, we want your input. 
we're interested in your opinion on what we do front office wise, certainly head coach and I guess general manager too. Not that you're going to dictate to us who we're going to hire, but we, we want to include you in the conversation. And what I was told is the reason why isn't because Deshaun said, hey, I'm God, I demand. It was because the organization viewed him as the leader of the locker room, the voice of the locker room. And so by including the voice, then, then the locker room is represented. Again, not players choosing their coach, just feeling like they have a voice. And then Houston didn't do it. They forgot. And they hired the general manager, who's got a Patriots background, of course, has been with the Patriots for 20 years. Of course, I'll explain in a minute. And now Deshaun Watson is miffed. And I discussed here before the Mike Florio report that he's going to ask for a trade. And I stand by, by what I said. If Deshaun Watson gets traded or asked for a trade, I will make a public apology to Mike Florio. Florio clearly, uh, when he heard, said, I heard rumors. The, the rumors about Deshaun Watson being unhappy are true. The rumors about Deshaun Watson demanding a trade, not true yet. But if they do come true, I'll apologize. They're not trading Deshaun Watson. I said that to you earlier in the week. I Again, I'll, I'll, man, if I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. Transparency, clarity, and honesty. They're not trading Deshaun Watson. They won't even, they won't even entertain the idea of trading Deshaun Watson. It's ridiculous. But they did step in it by making him a pledge and then forgetting. Then they held their Friday press conference and Mr. McNair, the apple not falling far from the tree, says that the strategy for the front office of the Texans is we're going to build a wall. What? You might have noticed here why I don't take a political side. Um, I've noticed a few of you, if I'm wearing a mask, you go, Fisher, what are you wearing a mask for? Or if I'm not wearing a mask, Fisher, you appear to be within six feet of Bree. Why? Take it easy. It, it, um, believe me when I say, I'm trying to do the very best thing I can to protect my family and myself and those around me. That just seems logical to me. But also believe me when I say there's a reason we don't do politics here. Because I can't talk you into anything and you can't talk me into anything. And, and therefore, in addition to the fact that every once in a while somebody will put a comment somewhere saying, Fisher, you're a commie and I know where you live. <laughs> Which causes me to go, you know, I don't have to stick to sports. But I think most of the time I might. Because I don't want you to firebomb my house because you didn't like who I voted for, for dog catcher. So I don't owe you clarity and transparency there. By the way, I'm old enough to remember when, who you voted for and what your religion was and what you did in the bedroom was like your business. But it just shows how old I am. Look at the gray hair. And then look at somebody goes, Fisher, why do you, why are your eyebrows so far apart from each other? And you guys said that in the comments. Two guys said it. And I'm like, I've never noticed that. I don't think they used to be. I'm going to have to find a picture of myself when I was younger. Is that what happens when you get old? Your eye, I think when you get old, your eyebrows look at your face and say, I want to get the hell out of here. And they start going like that. My eyebrows are simply trying to exit my face. That's the explanation. Best I got. So the Texans do their press conference and they say, hey, we're not Patriot South. We're not trying to be Patriot South. Really? Because the guy that ran the organization for the last seven years was Bill O'Brien, Patriots. The guy that just got hired, the general manager, Patriots. The guy who is the spider in the web that will not leave is Jack Easterby, who's not who, who's a who's a minister, but somehow he gets to be the director of football ops. It's ridiculous, but Patriots, they had to spring a leak to the Houston Chronicle to tell them we're not hiring Josh McDaniels. Otherwise, there would have been a march in the streets outside of Energy Stadium because he's Patriots. We've already written about 
if you go to texansdaily.com, you'll find this. They're not going to interview Eric Bieniemy. There's six job openings, six teams with openings. Five of them are going to interview the Chiefs offensive coordinator, not the Texans. Why? Uh, our old friend Matt Everflus, former Cowboys assistant coach, uh, hotshot defensive coordinator now with the Colts. He's interviewing all over the place. He was interviewed or, or uh, invited to interview with the Texans. He declined. Why? You are Patriot South. And you ought to be transparent about it and honest about it and wear it proudly. Listen, when the Cowboys won their three Super Bowls, every team in the league was trying to copy the Cowboys. Why not? Hire Norv. Hire Dave. Hire Butch. Interview Campo. Interview Joe Avizano. They're all trying to copy the Cowboys. You, you, you copy Bill Walsh. You copy Jimmy Johnson. You copy Jerry Jones. You copy Bill Parcells. You copy Bill Belichick. Nothing wrong with that. But the Texans won't even admit it. That's how cluster bucked they are. So, I mean, I know this isn't the the rosiest way to make you, the Cowboy fan, he, feel happy. But, you know, at least around here, there's some level of transparency. Now, I'm not saying uh, McCarthy is giving it to you, but the, the Joneses eventually give it to you. We will find out shortly what Mike Nolan's status is, and why. Jerry Jones will tell me, or tell us, or or tell 105.3 The Fan, or Stephen will. It'll be an announcement, or it'll be a whisper, or it'll be a phone call, or it'll be a text, but it's coming. The other thing about the Cowboys is you do know who to blame. The Texans are denying what they are. That's bad. The Cowboys are not denying what they are. They are they are the Jones family's team. For better or for worse, at least you have transparency. Thank you for subscribing to what we do here. I believe you get the alert when you hit that bell, if I'm not mistaken. A couple of people are asking about that. And then again, I apologize about my eyebrows. I think in uh, one of our next broadcasts, I will find a picture of myself and I'll hold it up and we'll shop and compare. What did I used to look like when I was 30 and what I used to look like when I was 12. Because when I was 12, I looked like I was 30. And I do not believe that I had a case of the runaway eyebrows. Fish.